I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. <laughs> What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Courtside Setup Podcast. Once again, Josh Ovenoff and the one and only Angel Ortega. Big week, UFC 263 fight with two title fights. Nate Diaz is back. NBA playoffs. Bellator. Uh, a boxing event. Another one featuring YouTubers. Uh, before we get all of that and more, I want to talk to you guys about Rogue Energy. Rogue Energy was founded in January 2017 to be the best gaming drink in the world. They developed a premium stack of the form of a delicious energy and focus drink. It's designed to replace unhealthy can energy drinks, coffee, and even traditional pre-workouts. Rogue Energy is sugar-free and is developed with vitamins and antioxidants and nootropics. They designed Rogue Energy for the emerging professional and competitive gaming market and continues to have fantastic carryover and success. The Zoom's athletes, entrepreneurs, and anyone looking to optimize their mental and physical performance. If you want 10% off your order, use the code SOUNDOFF at checkout. That's code sound off a checkout for 10% off of all your energy needs. Uh, last Saturday night from UFC Apex in Las Vegas, Nevada, there was a UFC event going on, uh, overshadowed in all the madness of last week's boxing event. There was UFC on UFC Vegas 28 main events. Your Zeno Rosen strike. Man, this guy is a different fighter inside the last 10 seconds. Uh, overall, a kind of an uneventful first round. Then in the last 10 seconds, your Zeno lands a big right hook. To the, to the right side of Augusto Sakai's head, puts him out cold uh, with one second remaining in the round. Angel, not a whole lot to take away from this one in terms of the fight itself because it was so brief. Uh, but, dude, Yorzino Rosenstrike back on the horse, back on the win column, back in the top five. What do you think about, think about his performance? I mean, what did I tell you, dude? I told you he'd be back. Like, what, <laughs> like, honestly, like, at this point, like, I don't even know why you questioned my takes. Like, I was just, I was You're, so right. You're basically Teddy Atlas, basically. Not even that, dude. I'm not sure Dom is like, I'm predicting the fucking <laughs> future out of here, dude. I mean, you predicted, I mean, you, you predicted a win, but at this point, like, it, it's a little bit, you know how, like, there's, like, mythical MMA fighters, like, you know, TRT mm-hmm. Vitor? Last 10 seconds, Rosen Strike needs to be in one of those motherfuckers, bro. Like, uh, knocks out think, Overeem. You, you think that's going to become a thing? Oh, it has to be. I mean, he knocked out Overeem within the last, literally the last five seconds. Th- same thing here. I mean, it is the first like, round, first round. Once he hears the yeah, true. But like once the dude hears the buzzer for the last 10 seconds, he's he, like, he goes and, yeah, he changes. <laughs> Different beast. But he overall, man, yeah. props for him for the win, though. I mean, I was a bit surprised, though, honestly, as far as I mean, how- dude, it didn't, it didn't even look like he connected. I mean, it just goes to show how much power he has. I mean, it looked like he touched him, but I didn't think it was like that kind of touch, you know, the, the death touch, you know? Yeah, I mean, he had the depth touch, bro. I mean, straight up. Um, I mean, it's some of those some of those shots, man. Once they get on the ear, that's when everything gets all fucking wobbly. Like it, just that kind of side of the head shot, um, which is basically what it was. Sometimes it doesn't look like there's any real power on those shots, but they work, dude. They work, and he, he put them out cold. So props to him for the win. As far as moving up the division, I kind of feel bad for the guy, and I want to get your take on this. Who who could possibly be next for him? I mean, he's already lost to Cyril Gon. He's lost in Ganu badly, and heavyweight's kind of in a bit of a kerfuffle at the moment. Uh, who would you match Jairzinho you know, up with next? Uh, maybe Blades. I think that'd be a decent play, and he could win that fight. Potentially, obviously, his biggest weakness, obviously, in the wrestling, and you know, obviously, that would get tested. And good win for Curtis if he gets that. Uh, I, I think I'm as as of right now, Dana kind of has a like, the, I guess, the winner of Ganu. Derek is going to be fighting Stipe, which is weird because I feel like your your Zinio Stipe could be a good matchup too. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, man. I mean, as far as it goes, I think Blade's probably the move to make, but Heavyweight is in such a weird place. I mean, you brought it up like Stipe is going to be fighting the winner of Ngannou Lewis, which is just I, I don't know too many people that still want Stipe, and then, I mean, outside of former host Nate Beggs, who I'm sure is very excited. Um, <laughs> Personally, I, I mean, I don't care for it. It should be John Jones, but we all know that. Um, can you imagine? Can you believe we're gonna get the Francis and Gano Stipe Miocic trilogy potentially? I'd almost say it's likely, dude. I mean, I don't want to count out Derek Lewis because the dude's—he's a monster. But at the same time, it's like, granted, though, we count him out every time. Almost, every dude. time, for sure. I, I don't or think, doubt him or doubt him somewhat, and he just comes out here and proves us wrong. I mean, he's like he he's like Brian Ortega in a way. I mean, this didn't really apply to Ortega. Josh, do you know about the mythical creature 
The one is Derek Lewis that knows anti jujitsu. Anti jujitsu. Anti jujitsu and anti wrestling. Just yeah, up. wrestling isn't real, and he also has anti jujitsu according to him. Do you ever like watch like UFC with somebody who's like not a real like not like not even like a casual fan? Somebody like never really watched it, and any time somebody gets taken down, like why don't they just stand up? That's what fucking Derek Lewis is, bro. He, he I don't think I've ever people. had someone like that. Luckily, if not, I probably lose my shit. <laughs> I've seen the comment before, but yeah, man. Uh, oh. Regardless of all that, uh, Yerzino back in the win column, co-main event. Man, it, it it's getting worse. Um, I mean, it's it's hard for us to hold our tongue at this point. But uh, Walt Harris, this is his um, third straight loss, third straight knockout. Man, um, it's rough. Uh, Marcin Tabora getting his fifth one in a row. Uh, I mean, what is what is it really to say about this one in the co-main event? Uh, for me, not a surprise for you who had hopes for Walt Harris. God, you're a good person. I'm not. <laughs> uh, hey man, I mean, once again, just goes to show why some, you know, the opposition shouldn't be fighting right now. Granted, not to discredit the the ability of Marson. I mean, he did it in pretty impressive fashion himself too. I did not expect yeah. it to be like that. Like I was like, I think he could get a finish, but not in the way in which he did. Yeah, no, I mean, I was I was personally pretty surprised. But regardless, man, I mean, I did have hope for Walt Harris. I mean, Marcin Tabora historically has been very hittable. I mean, Greg Hardy put a number on. Like, he, he he fucked him up, honestly. And I was like, man, Walt Harris significantly better than Greg Hardy. No, no, it did not go down like that. Um, de- definitely sad. At this point, they really need to adjust, like, Walt Harris' like, competition level. Um, as for who he's fighting, I mean, this is just, it's, it's getting ridiculous. It's getting pretty sad at this point. So, uh, but regardless of that, man, overall, still a nice win by Walt, uh, not by Walt. Harris, and well, Walt's oh. still technically in the rankings after race. He could still fight another ranked opponent. Yeah, but he shouldn't. He need he needs a, a Sergey Spivak. They need to dig up, the, they need to dig up some of Greg Hardy's old opponents. You know what I mean? Like, just yeah. give him a break. God, you're not wrong. But uh, regardless, man, outside of the main and the co-main, what are the fights of a uh, height? Well, let me rephrase. Uh, what fights outside of uh, Ponzinibbio and Biaza actually stood out to you? Because oh, we're totally I mean, that was the one I wanted to point out since we All were right, getting there. The... <laughs> I know, dude. We're going to go down that road anyways. I mean, shit. What is there to say, Josh? I mean, fight of the year for me so far. Oh, yeah. Hands it's, down. It's, it's so funny because I told you I haven't had like a fight of the year yet. And we were thinking back, and there, I did end up thinking of one later on, and then I remembered uh, Shane Burgos as a Burgos, but I'm like, that's not fight of the year. Like, it was no. a good fight, but that's not fight of the year. I, this is a good fight. Let me tell you this. It's extremely beatable. Damn, was it a good fight. Yeah, man. I mean, for me, it's fight of the year. I'm not, I'm, I mean, we could talk about other fights, like Burgos. It was a nice fight, but this nothing comes close. This is fight of the year, hands down. It, it just part of, like... Part of it is just to see Ponzinibbio, a guy who's gone through so much, so much adversity, not even just like health wise, just just everything, man. Uh, for him to be down after that first round and just him to come roaring back, even action withstanding, it was a great story. Um, but for him to get the dub was just it was it was incredible, man. But uh, fight of the year, hands down. Like you said, it, nothing else before this really was that crazy. Um, Nothing really stood out, and that's fight of the year for me for sure, at least at this point in the year. But um, as far as the rest of the card goes, um, where do the fights actually stand out to you? For me, it was a bit of a pretty of a disappointing card personally. I mean, I'm not sure if you feel the same way. For what it was, I mean, it was kind of, but there were some stuff that I thought were were decent, you know, that I, that I looked forward to. Um, we've been talking about disappointments. I mean, the Mason Jones Allen Patrick fight, which was shaping to be a very good Mason Jones performance after having a pretty good fight uh, against Mike Davis back on a uh, back uh, earlier this year. Mm-hmm. I mean that going to a no contest and obviously the low. Sh- I mean it was it was just devastating, man. I mean the, it, it looked like he was going to follow up his first performance with another great performance, but just didn't didn't end up getting it sadly because of the the foul that was committed. Mm-hmm. Well, and as, as far as that goes, I just it's it's a disappointing start to his kind of UFC career, and I don't necessarily think it's his fault as well. Um, but outside of that, man, overall, I thought I thought this card was kind of a mixed bag. 
obviously you did have a fight of the year contender um montana de la rosa getting a nice win as well over ariana Lipsky, which you know um Ilir latifi getting back in the win column over your boy tanner bozer what do you think about that decision you know, I'm not going to lie to you. I saw that afterwards, and I was like, dang, I really missed out on what happened. <laughs> Why? Can you can you recap that fight for me? Oh, for me, I mean, honestly, it wasn't a whole lot. Of, it wasn't a whole lot of action, which is why I personally didn't have a whole lot of issue with it. It was one of those fights where not a whole lot happened, so I kind of did not have a problem with the decision. So you weren't in denial, but some people were? Oh, absolutely. A lot of people were pissed. But from what I saw media-wise, most people had it for Latifi. Okay. Um, and it was a split decision. So it, it, was, it was a close fight, but at the same time, it was like I, I honestly didn't didn't really care i mean latifi's been kind of uh, i don't want to say shafted in terms of like decisions lately but he has had some pretty rough decisions that i thought should have gone the other way so i didn't have a big, whole lot of an issue with it i mean shit that's that's how it goes down right give the 30 give the 37 year old some love man mm-hmm for sure, man. So, shout out Alir Latifi. Uh, Muslim Silikov getting a nice win over Francesca Trinaldo. Um, Trinaldo, man, it just c- kind of sucks because he's been in this for so long, um, and he's never really gotten that big opportunity, that big shot. And You know, he's getting older now. He lost to Alex Silikov. Never really going to get that chance, for sure. Um, outside of that, man, pretty much a, a bit of a mixed bag on the card, but Dude, there's no time for a mixed bag this weekend, my man. Are you ready to move on to to, to the big card? Oh, dude, I'm fucking excited. For sure, man. Uh, I mean, there's there's no other way to put it. UFC 263 this weekend, Saturday night, uh, from the Gila River Arena in Glendale, Arizona. Packed stadium once again as UFC. They really, I think, I think they got a good thing going, man, where they kind of have these fight nights that are kind of more low-key, and then they just stack the pay-per-views hardcore, man. Um, that's how it just, should be. That's how it should be, bro. Um, and I, I do wonder if after COVID, uh, they kind of continue having that strategy whenever they're not having to sell out stadiums for fight nights. But regardless, man, um, absolutely insane card top to bottom. But we'll go ahead and start off in the main event, man. Who could have possibly imagined uh, all those years ago, back when they actually fought in Arizona, funnily enough, uh, back in April 2018, whenever we had a kind of not really that exciting fight between Israel Adesanya and Marvin Vittori. Uh, go, the, go the distance. Uh, it was a controversial split decision. Seemingly, everybody thought Israel Adesanya won the fight. Uh, he did win, but still there was one dissenting judge. Who would have thought that, you know, three years later, a l- little bit over, they'd be back meeting once again, this time uh, with the USC's middleweight title on the line. Uh, since that fight, Izzy obviously went on an incredible run, beating Anderson Silva, um, obviously Derek Brunson, Whitaker, Gastelum, Romero, so on and so forth. Uh, Vittori, on the other hand, he also, I mean, he never lost after that. He went on a 5-5 win streak, including two really nice wins over Kevin Holland and Jack Hermanson to get this fight. Um, so, Angel, my man, uh, big fight under the lights in Arizona. Did you see the second fight going any differently than the first? Well, Izzy Adesanya be in still after Saturday night. Hey man, I feel like more more time, more rounds almost benefits Izzy more if if it does end up getting past the third round. Obviously, I don't want to claim any in in which fashion it will end, man. Come on, Mar- you gotta be bold, bro. Oh man, dude, like flying on a Pilata Izzy fifth <laughs> just, round, ten seconds left. Oh, of course. Marvin taps GSP style. <laughs> I know, right? Okay, but but jokes aside, how do you how do you see kind of the the fight playing out? Hey, man, it's going to be your typical Izzy performance, I think. I don't know how, as far as the finish happening. I mean, Marvin Vittori is a hell of a guy, man. He's really tough. You know, you can hit him as much as you want, and you can output as much as you want, but he will stay in, in front of you and keep marching forward. I mean, he has, I think, no no given him, man. He he is a uh, very talented young man. I mean, in my opinion, Izzy's last, I mean, you can even argue back to the last time Izzy fought against him all his wins in comparison to all the ones that followed by marvin's aren't even i think aren't even very comparable to an extent man mm-hmm. uh and that's no disrespect to kevin holland and jack hermanson and the other opponents he faced on that streak but i think it's just a simple fact i mean man kelvin gaslam you know we know his story you know we know his capabilities i mean there's nothing to talk about there in a fight of the year that they gave us robert whitaker former champion over romero the only guy who was trying to get at robert whitaker for quite a while paulo costa you know the guy who who even he himself had 
kind of this infamy behind him. He's like, oh, he's too big, he's too strong, skinny, zizzy, all that. Uh, and now we stand here, man, and it's kind of like, you know, there was a split decision, but Izzy really did come on there at the end. And Izzy's looked better. You've changed, though. You've looked better. I mean, anything can happen, man. It's 2021, baby. We've seen what's been happening to our champs. <laughs> I mean, I'm still picking Israel out of Sonya, baby. But you, you know, you know what could happen, Josh. You know, you know what the deal is. I know what the deal is, bro. I mean, look, I would not be surprised in the slightest if Marmatori actually. I think I should save that that kind of monologue I was going to do for this for the other title fight in this card. I would be very surprised if Israel Adesanya actually lost this weekend. Um, yeah, I mean, look, look, you're right in terms of the fact that we've had a lot of upsets this year. I mean, we can say that about every year in mixed martial arts. Um, and nobody's invulnerable. I mean, we already saw Izzy lose once with kind of a bigger kind of... You know, this is... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me, I'm sorry to cut you off. This yeah. Izzy losing narrative, I think, is kind of... Kind of like out there I mean, it's kind of been brought up a lot they're like how is he going to deal with his first yeah. loss and it's like the guy's lost before in boxing and lost before in kickboxing actually been finishing kickboxing i don't think this is going to phase him at all i think i think izzy's kind of reeking of this confidence right now. i mean could it be fit could it be false confidence could it be a lot of things it could be but i feel like a lot of people are putting a lot of weight on a loss that i don't think has really phased izzy a lot i don't think a lot of things phase him He's a very hard individual to read, I think, uh, and very hard to break. For us to say that that one loss he had in the fashion in which it occurred in a weight class up, affecting him that much and it being a factor, I think, isn't a very likely thing. I think we're looking too much into the loss rather than kind of the facts of life that we have right now. These guys fought one time. What's going to happen in the championship scenario with five rounds and with the experience of gain and with the last five, and with their last three to five opponents? You've been waiting to get that one out, haven't you? You you've been listening to all the talk this week. You've been wait you've been waiting. I, I know, bro. I think I think it builds <laughs> me up, dude. I think us doing it a day before really gets me fired up. Well, look, I'll go ahead and I'll say this, dude. I fully I'm on the same page as you. I think this has been a really overblown narrative because it's like this is not let's go and let's go ahead and cut the bullshit right now, Angel. You and me, bro, let's cut the bullshit. We're we're gonna be the only MMA show that's probably gonna say this. This is not the fight we wanted. <laughs> this Marvin Vittori was... I mean, to an extent. I'd say, I think I would have liked to have seen a Marvin Vittori rematch, but I think he could have built up Marvin even more. He could have taken on more fights. And granted, obviously, as a fighter, you don't want to do that because your contract, as it is now, is going to stay the same, you know, until it runs out and then he can mm-hmm. get paid more. And obviously, cheaping a championship fight is a big deal because obviously that that's championship money. Mm-hmm. So... As far as from the Ashley perspective, I mean, I understand it, but man, I mean, I think you could have had a good build up for Marvin, though, in my opinion, and they kind of missed out there. All right, well, yeah, I agree, but also let's let's not pretend this is the fight most people wanted. Robert Whitaker was the fight that made sense. Marvin Vittori is here because he was the second guy up. He said yes. That's yep. one of the reasons why Marvin Vittori is here. You know, beating Andrew Sanchez and Cesar Ferreira is not the reason he's getting like it's it's. He, he, Are you hating, bro? No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, no, I'm going off, bro. I'm, 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 we're doing it live. No, um, I mean, let's be honest, dude. Like, he, he beat Jack Hermanson, which is a great win. That was a great win. That really put him on the map. But then, like, beating Kevin Holland, who took the fight in, like, what, seven days' notice? And then the way he still Kevin Holland lost that one after he got rocked in the fifth. I mean, it's like, yeah. I'm not that impressed with this fight, which is partially why I'm going to be hating right now. That's why I don't say I, I give him very little of a chance. Marvin Vittori is a good fighter, but I still don't think we understand just how good he is yet because his, his resume is not that excellent. You know what I mean? Like, he, he beat Hermanson in a back-and-forth fight, but even then it's like, who's Hermanson's best win? Gaslam on a, a very rushed streak. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. I I don't see – I don't give him much of a chance this weekend. I feel like people are trying to talk up that narrative, going back to your point. Um, I feel like people are trying to talk up the narrative of Izzy be maybe being not who he was – um, because he lost to Jan. There's a formula now. There's know? a formula. It's, it's totally not like everything. we didn't know it. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, we all t- you have to do is just be a great striker, have a great gas tank, be 25 pounds heavier, and have a good wrestling game. Also have nice judging on your side as well. Um, you just need all those things. Super easy gameplay. Like, people, oh, we're not going to sure how we respond. Dude, you know what happened last time Izzy lost? He got knocked out by Alex Pajaya. In glory with a check left hook. He got put out cold. You know what he did after that? He'd never lost until 2021. 
He went 20 and 0 in MMA after that fight. He has 100 professional combat victories. Yeah, so I you don't think give one any- loss is in a phase this man in the way it occurred too. Yeah, it's I not like give- Izzy was demolished. No, no, no. It was a it was a back and forth fight that like you can make the case he won. Not a good case, but a case. You can make a case, yes. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, <laughs> I don't give a fuck honestly about that whole that oh whole. Oh God, he let it out. Line. Because I'm hearing it too, man. I mean, you did your little rant. I'm doing it too, bro. It's, it's a stupid narrative. It's I, all good, it's, champ. Talk your talk your shit, champ. Talk your if shit. he loses, then then I'll be wrong. <laughs> but like, it's such a dumb thing. Uh, I'm gonna take Izzy Adesanya via destruction this weekend. Um, oh I see, shit! I mean, okay. Kevin Holland was having success striking like on the distance, away like striking at distance with Vittori. He's out of Sonya. He's ten times the striker. He has much better takedown defense. But Tori in the in the latter round started to get gas as well. Hermanson came on in the later rounds as well. I think five rounds is going to be huge for him. I think after this weekend we're going to remember why we, a lot of people had Israel Adesanya pound for pound after pound for pound number one after he beat Paulo Costa. I think we're going to see that all over again. However. <laughs> So we're still on, we're pretty much on the same side of that one, both picking Izzy. This one, I think we may have a little bit of divisiveness. Uh, Divas and Figueroa, Brendan Moreno, a rematch of arguably the fight of the year last year, my man. Um, absolutely Dang insane her. five round of the last time. Went to a draw. Davis and Figueroa had, would have won had there not been a point deduction for a low blow he landed. Uh, my man, very rarely at flyweight do we have these type of fights to where and this could be attributed to, and it's not his own fault, Demetrius Johnson's dominance. But really, do we have these type of fights that are just so hyped at that weight class? Uh, but at, at the end of the day, co-main event, Figueroa Moreno. How do you see the second fight, the second go-around going? Let me tell you, man, the flyweight division is a beautiful division. It gets a lot of hate. And a lot of people give Izzy, uh, our boy a uh, mighty mouse, a lot of shit for competing there at a long time. And people should talk the competition down there. But it's not the competition. It was just that the the champ was just that good. Mm-hmm. He had, in a way, what I would call kind of, and in a very di- different way, kind of that Habib syndrome where you're kind of like, well, he's not getting tested. You know, he's not getting pushed. I th- in, in a way, I think a little bit, kind of that similar thing. And man, let me tell you, these flyweights are something special, man. It's an extremely competitive division. And we sh- when we saw that, what is it, December of last year, right? That's when that fight happened. Four weeks mm-hmm. later, I believe. Davison Figueroa beats his opponent on short notice, who shows up on short notice because there was an opponent change. I forgot who it was supposed to be originally, but it was supposed to be someone else. Cody Garbrandt. It's supposed to be Cody Garbrandt. I think it ended up being Alex Perez, right? It did, yep. Alex Perez ends up taking the fight. Davison ends up winning that. I think submission, right, if I remember right? Yep, knocks him down in the first lane, gets to guillotine. Earlier in the fight, oh. Brandon Moreno versus Brandon Roval. Injury happens. Ground and pound occurs. Shit. The call out happens that same night for some reason, even though there's no beef. But you know something? Fuck it. We'll make it happen. (laughs) Four weeks later, man, these men come out and give us an amazing performance at a division that gets a lot of disrespect. We stand here on this beautiful Friday night, Josh, talking about this beforehand. On how one of these men will be crowned champion tomorrow for the flyweight division. Davis Ferrero, Brandon Moreno. Brandon Moreno, the Mexican pride has been shown in MMA, man. No native Mexican-born champ to this day yet in the UFC. David Ferrero is the one who stands in this way, man. Let me tell you, as far as matchup, man, you have a heck of a kid in front of you, a tough guy who won't give up, has been through a lot of adversity and has a hell of a story, but so does the man on the other end. Mm. And you know something, Josh? I'm betting the house on the Brazilian, man. I think the Brazilian does it. Oh. I, think I, I, he makes, I think he makes that tough weight cut for a reason, man. Look, Brandon Moreno <laughs> will show a lot of heart, a lot of pride, a lot of a lot of growth in his game, and he'll show why he's he's meant to be in the UFC, why he's in the position he's in right now. He's extremely good. He's a guy who I could see one day being champ and have champ material. If he doesn't end up doing that, I mean, that's okay, man. Right now, that's okay. There's still plenty of time. He's young. But I think that he won't be able to do it against the Brazilian. I think the Brazilian will come in ready. For those latter rounds, be aware that, you know, something, I can't just put this guy out. Or at least I won't be able to do it very easily. I'm going to mm-hmm. have to be ready for the long game. I think Davison is ready for that challenge. Man, I'm not going to lie. You kind of faked me out there. I mean, you were talking about how Mexico has never had a, a homegrown champion. I, I, th- I really thought you are going to go I know. Moreno, I'm going honestly. hard lately, aren't I? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you threw me off, man. Um, 
I mean, first fight, incredibly close. But at the same time, I, I feel like Moreno has a, has a lot of heart, man. And it's hard not to... He has upset potential. About, he has upset potential. Let me tell oh, you. Oh, absolutely. That. And it's hard also not to talk about his story, man. I don't think whenever we previewed this fight the first time that we really um, gave it, it like as much due. I mean, this we, is kid, we didn't have like, faith in him at the time. And it's and it's a simple fact. Yeah. We didn't. We both probably had Davidson. Yeah, I think you had him with an early finish. Uh, I think I had him with maybe a late finish. And shit, I mean, we're here now and we're talking, you know, we're mm-hmm. talking him up. Yeah. And, and and as far as that goes, man, I mean, he, he's a guy that, like, he was in the ultimate fighter. Um, he was the last pick. Uh, he ended up – he would have never even gotten on that. I mean, he was in the show, lost, and then ended up getting signed because somebody they needed somebody to fight Luis Smolka on short notice. And Smolka was, like, at that time, one of the top flyweights. He was scheduled to fight, like, I think it might have been Sergio Pettis on that card. Uh, he ends up beating him. He goes on this insane run, wins, like, two or three fights in a row. Uh, he was the first ever USC uh, headliner for a flyweight that was not Demetrius Johnson against uh, Pettis. Ended up losing that and got cut from the UFC. Comes back and fights through all this adversity, gets that title shot, puts on a war, fight of the year, man. And it's hard not to show love for Brandon Marino in his story, but I think it comes to a close on Saturday. And I'm betting the house on Davidson Figueroa, man. Um, it, it's hard for me not to think that like he's just you, you mentioned it, dude. He's huge for that weight class. He has so much punching power. And I said it after he beat Benavidez, dude. I'm like, this dude's going to reign this division for a long time. He's beatable, um, though. He's I, very beatable, but it's He doesn't seem immortal. Like, I think Moreno is the closest dude to him. Right now. But I also think Moreno's going to go down, especially now that Figueroa knows what to expect. I mean, all we need is another guy who can, you know, match match that power and have a great tank and push them to the fifth round. But who's that dude, though? That's, that's why we're here, Josh. That's why we're here. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That's why we're here. <laughs> That's why we're here, man. I mean, overall, though, I'm, I'm very, very excited for this fight. Um, I think it has potential once again to be fighting the year. Because these dudes, they're always moving forward, bro. They are always moving forward. Um, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We're both on the same page, though. Both taking Davidson Figueroa and still on Saturday night. Next fight, man. This one. Damn, am I excited for this one. In a lot of ways, the people's main event, Weird Leon enough. Edwards, 18-3 and three, on an insane win streak for so long, always looking to get his due, and he never does. Um, you know, I mean, you can go look at his, his Wikipedia page, dude. He has, like, a, like a, a four-paragraph thing about how many fights that, like, have been canceled for him, how many fights that, like, just so on and so forth. Just, just insane stuff, dude. Um, getting COVID lost like something like 15 pounds he got a really bad case um just to fight Woodley, but that got canceled twice i mean he ends up getting below muhammad and that fight ends up stopping in an eye poke finally man finally after something like seven years in the ufc after so many bout pullouts he's finally getting his shot his big moment and he's fighting nathan diaz and the first ever five round non-main event fight in UFC history non-title fight I should say as well uh, I was in AD is one of the biggest stars in the UFC I firmly put him probably at number two um, behind only Connor as far as pay-per-view draws um, he's returning for his first time in two years last loss to Horry Miles well via a controversial doctor stoppage before that man won three or four against Conor McGregor, Michael Johnson Anthony Pettis obviously one half of one of the you know the biggest rivalries in MMA history Connor Diaz uh, he's back man this fight itself, though, how do you feel about it? Uh, I think we may have talked about it when we first got it now. It's just about how kind of out of the blue it is. But we're here on fight week, man. What do you think about the fight itself? Who do you got coming out on top and more than likely getting the next title shot as well? I mean, shit, man. It's 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 out there. Let me tell you, it's out there. I did not expect uh, Nathan Diaz, as he likes to be called now, because that's his name. <laughs> uh, you know, no more Nate Diaz. Nathan, Nathan, Nathan Diaz is uh, taking on our boy... Uh, Leon Rocky Edwards, man. I mean, like we said, it's just it's just odd. It's it's weird how it's even come to be. I mean, Leon could be fighting literally anybody else in the top, like literally anybody top fifteen ranked right now, and it would make more sense than this fight. Shit, I think he could be fighting Connor, and it would make more sense. Yeah, I mean, literally everybody, honestly. Yeah, it, uh, it, it's just very out of the blue. Granted, he was scheduled to fight Hosmod, so, you know, there there's the logic for you, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, and I think he got this fight as well because he was stepping up to fight Kazma Chemaev whenever nobody else wanted to. 
Yeah, you think Uncle Dana was like, I'll pet you, son, here, take. Well, I mean, Dana told him after he took that little Muhammad fight, like, you know what, man, I'll, I'll give, I'll, give, I got you for this one. I got you this one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but overall, man, just, a, just a strange fight and how it kind of came together. But I mean, from, from my understanding, the, the Diaz camp, from what I've heard for this fight, um, is they took this fight for mainly one reason. Wow. Uh, they want to get a title shot at 170. And they need to beat a top fiver to do it. And they seem they seem to think that Leon Edwards is that dude, the most likely dude. Um, rightly or wrongly, I I mean, that's their thought process. Do you think Diaz gets the win, man? Do you think it's possible? I don't think Diaz gets him, man. I mean, I think he would have been better maybe finding himself in a BMF rematch with Masvidal. But even then, I don't think he would beat Masvidal. Mm-hmm. I just think Rocky's just going to be too good for him, man. Throw too many of those kicks. He has good power. I mean, if Nate had more pop, dude, I think he'd be he'd be chilling. Like, if he had, it's crazy because he has the cardio, he has the hands, he has pretty good jujitsu. Obviously, we've seen it. And if he just had that bit of power, but I think Nate isn't like a true 170 when he wants to be. You know what I mean? I don't think Nate like puts on a lot of weight either or cuts a lot. I think he's kind of like walks around 170. You know what? I would normally agree, and I actually agree when it pertains to his previous fights. I'll say this much, though. He looks a le- like a legit 170-er. I was going to uh, say, least... he, 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 looked, he looked better this time around. But as I was say, I feel like in the, in the past, he, I, I swear he's never done it consistently, though, where he mm-hmm. just looks like, oh, he. you could tell that fucking guy cuts. Granted, though, we were talking about the weight class where Michelle Pereira fights, and you see how big he looks. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, he's a 170-er. Michelle Pereira is a 170-er. Technically, yes. Whenever so, he can make it. That too, so I don't know. I mean, that's the other thing. I don't, maybe they, I don't know. Maybe we'll see some of that added weight. Maybe there'll be more pop behind Nate Diaz's, you know, jab and hits. But I, I, that's the one thing that Toby's eclipsed him. You know, he just doesn't have power. He has output, but just not the power. Good cardio. Hmm. Yeah, man. And as as far as it goes, I mean, you mentioned it. That probably Masvidal in hindsight probably would have been the best matchup for him. I was very surprised when he took this fight because, I mean, let's let's be honest here. Leon Edwards, he he's he's a he's a bad man. He's a bad man who's pissed off. Um, he, he's never really gotten his due. He got asked one question at the press conference yesterday. One. Um, he's very much flying under the radar. Everybody's talking about Nate Diaz, dude. I think Leon Edwards, I and mean, I, I know, I'm not sure if he gave your prediction yet, your official one, but um, I got Leon Edwards via destruction, dude. I mean, I think this is a guy who's pissed via off. destruction, boy. Yeah, I don't think this one's going to even be close. Chill, I bro. I, I, I'm got finished, bro. I think he's going to finish it. I can see a finish. Yeah, I don't I mean, disagree. I, um, and, and look, I think it's going to be interesting because down the stretch, and Leon's one of those guys where it's like it's interesting because he fights he fights to his own drum. You know what I mean? He walks to, he walks his own pace. Uh, he slows the fight down, or he'll fight higher pace. He kind of controls that. He's really good at that. But even then, dude, he's a guy in those later rounds that and I can see why Diaz took the fight. It's he doesn't slow down necessarily, but he kind of takes his foot off the gas. Uh, Cerrone had a lot of success. Now, this was three years ago, but Donald Cerrone had a lot of success in those last two rounds against him. Um, uh, Dos Anjos had a good last couple of rounds. I mean, Gunnar Nelson ended up, I think, got mount in the last round and nearly finished Leon Edwards. So I get the argument behind it, but, dude, I I think this could be straight up a destruction, man. I think this is a terrible matchmaking decision on, on uh, the DS team's part. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming you're on the same page. I mean, I, I do think Leon's going to win. I'm not on the destruction page, but it could be. It could be. <laughs> so, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree with you on that, actually. I just don't think – personally, I don't think it, it's going to be, but I don't mm-hmm. think it's out of the realm of possibility either. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. I'll take that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but outside of that goes, um, those are the three most anticipated fights on the card. However, we still got two more on the main card. Uh, next up, also another welterweight away fight. Damian my potential farewell fight. Uh, I don't know. I if hope he's, so. <laughs> I don't know if he's officially said it, uh, but Damian Maia, straight up legend of the game, one of the greatest grapplers in MMA history, taking on Bilal Muhammad, who's looking to break into the top ten. Uh, what do you think about that fight, my man? You know, man, you know he's a legend of the sport. I mean, if he comes out here, doesn't and retire, wouldn't that be an amazing way to go out? He is taking our friend Bilal Muhammad. Uh, you know, kind of awkward situation with him being there with his previous opponent, and obviously the, what occurred with that fight. Hey, man. You know, as far as, you know, the, the actual fight itself, let me tell you, it, you know, it hasn't been until very recent time that, that Damian Maya got put out 
you know, he, he is very good at avoiding, you know, going out and taking a lot of damage for the boat. I mean, he'll take it. He'll definitely take it. <laughs> Let me tell you, he'll definitely take it. But he, he can definitely find ways to survive and, and keep you down. I mean, if Damian Maya gets that back at any point from below Muhammad, I mean, if he's able to get him down, avoid the damage, weather the storm, I mean, it's, you know, Damian Maya will take you to the cards, bro, and make it close if he has to. I just don't think he'll do that against Bilal Muhammad. I think Bilal Muhammad will win this. Just uh, obviously if there's a scary scenario where the back is taken or something like that, do not count out our friend Damian Maya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, this fight uh, is actually really, really interesting to me for a multitude of reasons. Um, it's really flying out of the radar, in my opinion. I think most people are forgetting this fight's even happening. Uh, I'm actually going to go Damian Maya, man. I mean, I, I'm a big fan oh, of Oh, you fucking savage. I know, man. I'm, I'm taking I'm, the 43-year-old? I'm taking the 43-year-old just got knocked out Damian Maya, man. Um, I, I just... Let me tell you this. You made Damian Maya feel good. <laughs> well, I don't know what the odds are in this one, but I... I, I don't know, man. I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to go ahead and take him. I mean... Probably be a decision. I mean, Bilal's never been submitted ever. I know he trains out of a really great camp with River Sport and uh, Daniel Vanderlei as their head coach uh, as far as jiu-jitsu pertains. Um, he, he's a great guy. He doesn't show his ground game a lot, but he's very underrated. Same time, Damian Maia is another level. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take Damian Maia. I think Bilal's probably going to have success down the stretch. Damian Maia always gasses. Uh, but I'm going to take Maia regardless, man. I'll bring up the main card, though. This fight... Got a lot of heat on him, man. I'm not sure if you watched any of the embeddeds. These dudes. I did see that. It was weird. Paul, Paul Craig has an ability. Seemingly, because he seems like such a nice guy in interviews. People fucking hate Paul Craig, bro. I've like him. Every single one of his opponents. I remember Quill uh, Roundtree knocking him out and just standing over him. Like just mean mugging him. Him and Jimmy Crute had a weird thing. Alonzo Menafield too. Like, and then the show, the weird Shogun rivalry. People hate Paul Craig. Regardless, though, uh, he's taking on Jamal Hill, uh, a nice prospect out at 205. Big dude, 6'4", uh, just coming off a knockout win over Vince St. Preux. He's 8-0 at this point, should be 9-0. Uh, he had one win overturned because he used the ganja during fight week. Regardless of that. Man. Um, what do you think about this fight? The most opening? dangerous performance-enhancing drug, Josh, I tell you. Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, that's well. You know what? Nate Diaz was lighting up on stage, bro. That's that's why this is so fucking stupid. Because Nate Diaz was lighting up on stage yesterday. I know, and right? As long as you don't in Arizona, as long as you don't come in literally under the influence, you're fine. Yeah. But regardless, man, uh, what do you think for this fight opening up the main card? Uh, that's an interesting one, but hey, man, light heavyweights. I mean, they're probably the second best thing to heavyweights. No surprise, right? <laughs> uh. Hey, man, I'm picking our boy Jamal Hill. I think he'll beat uh, Paul Craig. Obviously, Paul Craig, you know, can do some stuff on the ground, but I got faith in Jamal Hill. I mean, he's been riding this wave. I mean, he's a good prospect. Let's let's get it, champ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I'm going to go ahead and take Jamal Hill as well. I'm a big fan of Paul Craig, but I I just, I don't know. He's a very limited skill set. I do think the, the uh, Shogun win last time out was a very nice win. I think that one's going to go underrated because Shogun's really, really old. But that showed a lot of improvement on his part because, I mean, Shogun should have beat him the first time around. Uh, but regardless, man, I'm going to take Jamal as well. But outside of that, my man, uh, what on the undercard stands out to you as far as fights to watch? I mean, we can just head to the prelim, and I can tell you real quick, my friend. <laughs> I mean, you could say you could almost say the whole prelim. I mean, we got Lo Lo Lauren Murphy, uh, Joanne Collarwood. I mean, it looks like whoever wins that fight probably gets a title shot. I think, right? They should. Log they should. Logical, logical next step. I mean, shit, we've seen, we've seen what the UFC can do sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I saw Lucky Lauren Murphy actually talked about that about how like she's not, you know, she's not gonna count her eggs before they hatch as far as getting any sort of title shot because she knows how the UFC is. Yeah, Uncle Dana can change it real quick. For sure. I don't, know if, I don't know if it's necessarily Uncle Dana, but you know what I mean. Maybe yeah, I know what you matchmakers. Mean. Yeah, she's running a nice little one streak right there herself. I mean, and and then the fight below that, uh, Musar Ivolaya versus Hakeem Daudu. I mean, that's another banger right there, man. Again, you know, featherweights too at that. So give them some love. And at lightweight, I mean, the the rank guys, right? We got to you got to give them some love too. Drew Dober, Brad, Brad Riddell. How do you feel about that matchup, Josh? I mean, originally I Brad Riddell had. Dude, I am psyched for that fight, dude. Okay. I am very excited for that fight. I like that um, energy. No, oh, dude, I, that's one of the most anticipated fights on the card. Um, it's it got good energy, bro. Uh, Drew Dober, one of the most underrated dudes. Um, is for my money at lightweight just entirely. 
Um, yes, he did lose to Islam Makachev. Yes, everybody is also going to do that in the future, though. Um, this is the dude that, like, he he's finally started, and you, you've seen this in his last few fights, he's finally starting to put hands on people, man. He's always had, like, you can tell the dude's in shape, you can tell that he has punchy power, but he finally flipped the switch, dude, uh, and he figured it out for whatever reason, whatever was holding him back before this. Start putting hands on people, dude. Marco Polo, Roy, uh, Reyes, Nasrat Hakparast, and Alexander Hernandez all got fucking bludgeoned by the dude. Uh, Brad Riddell, another great prospect, 29 coming out of New Zealand, uh, nine and one. You see, he's only had a couple fights in UFC, but you can clearly see the skill sets there. Uh, I'm very psyched for that fight, man. You love to see it. You love to see it. Uh, as far as outside of that, uh, Eric Anders is back. Love me some Eric Anders rematch against Darren Stewart. Um, shout out Eric Andrews, man. Very interesting career path. I mean, this is always a dude that, like, we've talked about him. He came from the NFL. Um, really more or less known for his time in college, where he was a he was a starter for, like, three years at Alabama. Uh, surprised he didn't. Alabama player. Yeah, won the national championship. Uh, seven tackles and a forced fumble against Texas. Um, and, you know, eventually makes his way over to MMA, and he started off 10-0. and 0. He went on to, like, that really rough streak there where he ended up losing, like, four or five. Um, but regardless, after that, I mean, he's turned it around, knocked up man, his... he really uh, was killing for a bit. Yeah, he's turned it around, man. Uh, Darren Stewart back once again. Obviously, his opponents. Uh, Chase Hooper's back, taking on Steven Peterson. Uh, Matt Steamroll of Favola's back. Pini and uh, Kenzad taking on Alexis Davis should be fun. And then Carlos Felipe, Jake Collier, uh, should be a banger. Low-key banger on the card opening of the card i should say but yeah man is there anything else on this you want to go ahead and talk about before we close out no oh, man i think we highlighted it pretty well i'm just really excited to recap this and see you tomorrow uh i think we're in for a good one brody i really think we are man it's it's probably the best i mean at this point it's it's weird i, I don't want to say like it's the best card of the year because you see man ever since hey man every every card could be the best card of the year let me tell you <laughs> yeah i know man that They've really turned it around, though, once they started having uh, crowds back. But regardless, man, uh, we're going to go rapid fire, man, as far as these next few uh, topics. Because, man, not, I'm not these next few topics, I should say. Um, just really this one topic, actually. Uh, Clarissa Shields, man, she made her debut uh, last night, taking on 3-6, and six, now 3-7, and seven, Brittany Elkin. Uh, PFL4, it was the main event uh, the quote got the headlining, stop, uh, headlining spot, I should say. Uh, going in, she was a massive favorite. Still, though, man, uh, she ended up having to fight for it. Brittany Elkin was up two rounds to nothing. Uh, in that third round, though, she ended up coming back, storming back, and ended up getting the finish. There's a lot to say about it as far as her, her takedown defense, um, her sprawling ability, her jiu-jitsu ability, which is very clearly lacking. Uh, neither getting submitted, I believe, the first round, but... Um, man, what do you think about her first fight as an MMA uh, a fighter and her coming out on top, having to fight through the adversity? I mean, let me tell you, dude, she is one tough chick, man. Not anybody could have done what she did that night. I mean, she was really, she really went through adversity in that first fight, which is a good thing. You know, you never want to have an easy fight. I think in a way, I think you always kind of want to test your skills to the to the best of their ability. And clearly she learned, you know, I got, I got a lot to work on on the ground. I need that or just get really good at ground defense and, you know, uh, stopping submissions. And, uh, hey, man, I mean, they're like, what, what, what has it been? Not even a few months of her training, right? Seven mm-hmm. months, six months, something like that, right? Something and like that. And she still plans on dividing her attention to, uh, to boxing as well. I mean, she has a lot of time which is the great thing with her. The thing is, though, I mean, you definitely want to start getting rolling, and she has to realize, like, hey, I really need to dedicate my time to this if I want to perform at this, because she could have very easily lost that fight. She ended up coming out on top, though, which is a good thing, because she was she was the one behind. You know, because if mm. it would have been her the entire time dominating, and then it kind of got flipped on her, it would have been like, okay, we got it. But I think it was more impressive the fact that she struggled and ended up winning the fight in a fight she would have lost that would have gone to the cards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. And, and as far as it goes, I think the most important thing was that she fought through adversity. Um, but I even told you before before you went live right now that um, as it pertains to, like, am I impressed? And I, I don't really have any opinions. I mean, as, as far as it goes, because 
until she fights somebody of her uh, commensurate skill level, like until she keeps on training and fighting better competition, it's like she was able to come from behind. I, that showed great heart, but I knew she had heart. I mean, she's she's literally the top level. I don't care about her boxing credentials more like a professional because professional boxing like for women is bare bones. Um, it's more the fact that she was a what two time Olympian like that is insane talent. Um, that is insane heart. So I was not that surprised that she was able to come from behind. But until she fights somebody of better talent level, I particularly don't care that much. I mean, Brittany Alcom was maybe three and seven. She, she was, for all intents and purposes, a can for this fight. Now, the fact that she was able to come from behind shows a lot. Um, and the fact that she, I mean, she, she did overcommit on like flurries and stuff like that. But overall, still a good debut. I'll give her that much. It was a good first yeah. outing. We can't. We I think you can't really give her a lot of. You can't really shit on her because she really did perform better in some aspects than we thought. I mean, she was coming out and competing against a girl who's a brown belt. Granted, translates different, you know, from just strictly jujitsu with a gate to obviously doing it in MMA. Uh, nevertheless, though, a lot more ground experience than her. And obviously, I I thought in my in the back of my mind, like if she ends up with someone who's very talented on the ground, she's going to have a terrible night. Because that is really hard stuff to learn and really stu- hard stuff to deal with. I mean, you know, she could not fight a somewhat, let's say, decent with her hands, high-level college wrestler coming into MMA. I think she'd have a lot of trouble right now, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. Just because mm-hmm. that is one of the well, one of the things that we've seen historically translate extremely well, but one of the hardest things to learn as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it's fair enough. I mean, I'm not going to shit on her, necessarily. Um, he's like, you know, I think she did better than we expected, honestly. And then that's really what I it mean, is. I think I think we got to be a little honest, too. I think I, she honestly did better than what we expected. I mean, what were you expecting, though? Let me ask that. Cause not I, a lot. Not, not anything. Not a lot, really? really. I was like, I didn't really know what to expect, you know, because I'm like, MMA is just so different, dude. That's my thing. Like, MMA, MMA to boxing, boxing, MMA is just so different, dude. I can never... That's why I, anytime we do any of these kind of things where there's crossover or anything like that or someone's kind of new to the sport, I'm like, dude, it's it's very hard to tell you what to expect because what do you expect? I don't know what to expect with her. What if she comes out here and looks like Hoist Gracie on the ground? You know what I mean? <laughs> what if she submitted her, Josh? What if she would have submitted – after seven months of training, she would have submitted Brown Belt Brittany Elkin with like an Oma I mean, Pilata that, or some shit like that? Yeah, that I mean, you would have – that would have yeah. been pretty impressive. Like if she would, I don't know what to expect, but she came out here, got dominated on the ground, looked decent on the feet, ended up ended up not doing with her what her corner told her to do, and standing up the fight and remained in the position, and beat the girl ground and pound. I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff that was good. I think I that's why I say I'm impressed. Mm-hmm. And that's fair enough, and I'll give you that. I mean, but it all depends on what you were expecting. I expected her to go out there and win, and she did, because she was fighting somebody of a lower skill level. I I thought she was going to win, but I did see a lot of doubt, though, Josh. I started looking around, digging around, and there were some doubters out there. No, I mean, I'm sure there were. I mean, there's always going to be doubters, but regardless of that, I mean, it was was a nice win for her. I'm not going to shit on her. Um, She's fighting who she should be. I mean, she's fighting these people that she should beat. So, um she should be fighting people of equal, if not slightly better skills, if she's trying to get better at the sport. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. But outside of that, I mean, it's going to be interesting to watch how she develops from here. I know she's taking another boxing fight, so you probably won't see in there for probably, what, like six months, something like that. Um, which, it'll be fun to see her with six more of experience, six more months of experience under her belt. Because um, she clearly has the talent. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm disappointed we're going to end up seeing... Um, uh, Kayla Harrison leaving before she ends up fighting because Chris Shields is obviously not there. She's nowhere near that level, but who knows if, if they both stay in PFL, maybe one year, two year down the line, we'd, we'd be able to get that fight. I mean, we know uh, what's going to happen though. <laughs> we know what happened, but still it'd be fun because it, she's, she's improving rapidly. So who knows? Um, but regardless of that, man, uh, real quickly, Belter 260 is actually happening right now. Um, and this fight, I know you've been, very psyched for these top two fights, man. And I am too, but I mean, man, you've been talking to me about the, like even outside, outside of the show, about how excited you are for these top two fights, man. Uh, Belter 260 from the Mohegan Sun Arena in Connecticut. Um, main event, dude, as good as it gets. Outside of the UFC, it, it's nothing gets better than this. Douglas Lima, 
Uh, for my money, the best welterweight, arguably best fighter in general outside of the UFC. Uh, 32 and 8 wins over Roy McDonald, Michael Page, Andre Korshkov, Lorenz Larkin, Paul Daly, so on and so forth. Uh, taking on the undefeated Yaroslav Asimov, 25 and 0 for the Bellator Welterweight World Championship, my man. Uh, a lot on the line. And like I said, probably the best fight outside of the UFC you could possibly even make. Um, what do you think of the main event, man? Who do you got coming out on top? It's a banger, man. It's a banger. I'm so excited, man. I mean, we got, I mean, some of the best guys in the world here performing, dude, and that's that's all you could desire. As far as who I got, man, I Douglas Lima, man. He's he's a, yeah, he's he's something, man. He's something special, man. I wish he was in the UFC. I'm sure he'd make it real fun with his skill set. I mean, he is a beast. His leg kicks are brutal. I mean, this guy is something special. There's a reason he's champ in Bellator. At the same time, his opposition, man, Yaroslav Amazov, dude, 25 and no best professional record in MMA right now. Mm. No one in MMA has his record or his clothes right now. At this moment, who's actively fighting? Obviously, formerly Habib, 29 and 0, no longer active, retired. We have a guy here who is potentially three fights away from matching that record undefeated mm-hmm. potentially and becoming champ and getting and becoming potentially 26 to no man and you know something i want the story to happen josh i'm picking yaroslav amazov oh I my god see it i want to see it <laughs> you know man i'll give you that um listen man i mean i don't know if you're giving douglas Lima his his deserved due i mean this is the dude i mean the guy's a beast the guy's for, a beast. for so long i mean We've, we've hyped them up for years and very rarely a lot of these dudes outside of the UFC that's like oh you know we'll hype them up and then they'll falter they'll they'll lose they'll get dominated maybe they'll sign but they'll just just not the same he'll lose but dude he comes rolling back each and every single time I think he's gonna catch another L tonight I'm going Yaroslav I'm a oh my god let's I'm get going it, Yaroslav let's go. 26 let's go champ, let's let's go, go, champ. champ. Uh, I mean, listen, man. You want to see it, don't you? Is that what it is? It's because you just want to see it. No, nah, but also that just his skill level, man. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of Douglas Lima, but I think the only way you're going to stop this kid is if you got a guy like Yaroslav oh, Amazov. <laughs> no, I mean, no, I mean, like in order to stop him, I'm saying like you're going to need a guy like a Logan Story, like an all-time great wrestler. I mean, he was a four, he was a four-time NCAA All-American. Uh, he was a former state champion as a wrestler, and even he like. Do wrestling was not able to stop on the feet. I don't think it's going to be the same. Uh, I'm going to go and take your all slab. I'm a slab, my guy. Uh, I'm going to go and take him 26 and 0 after tonight. Uh, belt weight, belt or welterweight champion as well. And dude, in the co-main event, we got we potentially may see who he would fight next. And damn, dude, I'm I'm arguably more psyched for this fight. I'm like what do an you mean, Josh? Value. We already know who he's fighting. He's falling Paul Daly. Really, that's you're who not he's even... fight. We're he's skipping. Fighting, the, you're skipping the preview, dude. You're going man, straight. Man, I don't Daly. need a preview. I know it's gonna be Paul Daly, baby. I know Paul Daly's gonna fight Yaroslav Amazov. Damn, dude. Uh, so there we go. Paul Daly is gonna beat Jason Jackson in the co-main event. He thinks he's gonna fight Yaroslav Amazov. After all this time, Paul Daly would be getting a Bellator uh, title shot, dude. He's never once, which is crazy considering how long he's been in the promotion and so long he's been kicking ass. Uh, he's never gotten a title shot, dude. You think? Because it's happen? about to happen. It's about to happen after this fight. You know what, man? I'll give it to you. I'm gonna. St- you know what? Just for you, I'm gonna stay on the train as well. I'm gonna go ahead and take Paul Daly in the co-main event. Let's Jason get it, Dax- Semtex. Let's Dax- go, champ. Not, not to be underestimated, though. The, the ass kicking machine. The ass kicking machine, Jason Jack. I mean, I do gotta give it. Away. He's fighting the ass kicking machine. <laughs> God. The ass kicking machine. I would not be surprised if he ended up coming out on top. Mm-hmm. 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 But. Yeah, man. I mean, as far as the rest of the Bellator card goes, uh, what stands out to you? Oh, man, Aaron Pico, man. He's back, baby. Let's get it. I mean, the guy who is the most hyped Bellator prospect probably ever. <laughs> oh, yeah, without a doubt. Or at least more hype, most hyped up by Bellator, I should say. He's fighting Aiden Lee. He's, he's taking on a good dude in Aiden Lee. You got to give credit to Aiden Lee. Mm-hmm. And, and look, I mean, Aaron Pico is basically the only ever time in MMA we've seen, like, you know, the – you see it through other sports, right? Like kids who like train their entire lives at this one sport, and then like they're, they're like a, they're like a super athlete, right? 
But Aaron Pico was that dude. I mean, he was he was a uh, an Olympian. He's been training boxing for like his entire life, um, so on and so forth, dude. And he's had a bit of a rough road, but he's finally turned it around. I mean, he was he was fighting these dudes who were like Zach Freeman was something like seventeen and two, and like was a former champion for like a promotion as well in his debut. And that's his that was his first fight, bro. Like they did they did push the fuck out of Aaron Pico unnecessarily. I know, and then like he finally he started getting his way up. He he knocked out Leandro Higo, who was like still a top five guy in Bellator, dude. He put him out cold. He was a former um, title challenger, and after that they just fed him to the walls, man. Uh, Henry Corrales, Adam Boric, he lost both of those via brutal knockout. He's turned back around, won three in a row. I think he's gonna win this one as well, man. He he could potentially be next up for a title shot if he wins this weekend. So uh, we'll see what happens there, man. And then dude, this this. Probably the best belt record, like top to bottom this year, and like not just like main card wise, because they also got Kyle Crutchmer on the um, undercard, very great dude out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, two-time NCAA All-American, uh, two-time Big 12 champion, amazing wrestler on the prelims. Taiwan Claxton is very, very a lot of fun, top 10 guy over there in Bellator featherweight. Nick Newell. It's fighting as well, man. I mean, he's coming back. It's, it's a lot of fun though. It's it's a lot of fun um so yeah man it's it's good it's a great card happening right now actually so i know right <laughs> but yeah oh, outs- outside of that man um we can go ahead and move on from take it take a little bit of break from combat sports don't worry we'll be back in probably 10 minutes um but overall man just a quick check-in on the nba playoffs your guys, bro. I mean, we keep on talking about since I believe since the last week, the Suns obviously they eliminated the Lakers. It yeah. happened. Easy money, you know the vibes. Easy money wasn't even close. Um, obviously Anthony Davis came down. He tried to come back, I should say. Went down again with injury. Like I said, happens he got every scared. single time. He Anthony just went Davis to the went. bench. He got yeah. scared. He just went to the bench, Josh. He got scared. Yeah. Regardless, yeah. Uh, regardless, man. You guys ended up facing the Nuggets. You're up two nothing. Both games have been domination. Um, I mean, what, what can you even say for this? How how, how proud are you are your boys? You guys think you close it out in four? Do you think the Nuggets even get a game? I could see them getting one game. I could see it. You know, five. I'll see us. You know, get Suns in five. <laughs> Suns in five. Oh my God, bro! You you you're all about it, man. You're all about it. Um, you know I gotta be champ. You know you know I gotta be. I mean, I'll give you guys credit, man. Hey, look, without a doubt, th- I mean, here's, the, here's the crazy thing. Never, if you ask me, the start of the season, I would have never predicted for a thousand years. The most likely outcome we're looking at right now is the Jazz versus the Suns in the Western Conference Finals, bro. That I mean, that's insane. the one and two seed, man. I mean, it, it, it's written right in front of you, Josh. I mean, you <laughs> that is the one and two seed. I'll give you that, bro. But, I mean, never would have expected regardless. You can't say that you would have either. Obviously, I the mean, Jazz are up 2-0. Do you, you think Josh, that stands the same? I, uh, yeah, I think they. I think the Jazz win. I think they beat the Clippers, man. It's going to be Suns-Jazz finals in the West. We coming for that ring, baby. All right, well then, hey, I mean, you're coming for that ring. I think that's actually a really good matchup for you guys if you do end up facing the Jazz. It's, a good, East, though, it's a good game. It's a really competitive game, yeah. The East, though, man. I mean, the, the final four there, Hawks, 76ers, Nets, and Bucks. Um, right now, 76ers and Hawks tied at one apiece. I think game one is kind of a bit of a – Hawks came out firing. 76ers still almost came back and won that game. Uh, Bucks had to fight tooth and nail, dude. Like the, that game yesterday was hard to watch. They, they fought their ass off, barely escaped the victory. Um, if you were to go and bet your life right now on one team to go ahead and get out of these, is it still on the Nets? Do, do you have any yes. qualms about them after last night? Yep, still the Nets. Still the Nets. So you think – so right now, it's looking like it's probably going to be your boys against the Nets. You're feeling good. You're feeling good about that if that is the matchup. I mean, I got to be, bro. I can't – I can't. like I said, I can't give out on them, dude. I can't. But I got to be confident on them. Mm, fair enough, man. Fair enough. Um, as far as your NBA playoffs is concerned, anything outside of that you want to go and pull one out? Anything about specific matchups? No, man. I mean, just – I'm excited, man. Next time we'll be back. I mean, I, I mean the picture might be set, Josh. It pretty much might be set. It's I'm looking, excited. I'm also hyped, dude. I mean, this, these playoffs have been fun as fuck just because, like, 
a lot of teams you're not really expecting. They're coming out of the blue, man. Hawks are still giving it a, giving it a fine series. It's it's degeneration, Josh. It's changing over, dude. I mean, all these young guys, they're the next, they're the next ones. They're the next, they're the next big games. I mean, LeBron, the Paul George, the Kawhi Leonard. I mean, that's coming to an end, my friend. I know it is, man. It, it's it feels really weird, but. We all know that the point God will be here forever, Chris Paul, man. I mean, he really. <laughs> I mean, he's gonna retire on his on his own. Fair enough, man. I'll give you that. Um, very very exciting though. I'll give it that. Uh, very very exciting. I'm happy for your boys. Not like I said, never in a million years would have expected Jazz and Suns. But regardless of all that, man, uh, that's all we got on that. I'm gonna tell you guys about a fun little program that you can use watching the NBA playoffs this weekend. Monkey Knife Fight is a daily fantasy sports gaming website for the casual sports fan that is simple, fun, and easy to play. You just determine which superstars are competing in the day's professional sporting events. Record more or less of the contest line provided. Monkey Knife Fight's daily fantasy prop games play similar to the salary cap daily fantasy sports games without the algorithms, lineups, most importantly, sharks. There are several contests to choose from, none of which require hours of research required on competing websites. Start with a simple two for two or go for the highest payouts up to 100 times and higher by selecting an eight for eight more or less contest. Get started now with a 100% instant match bonus, up to $50 of promo code COURTSIDE. Andrew, I know you're a big fan of Monkey Knife Fight. Former host Nathaniel Beggart is as well. Uh, amazing site. Use him this weekend for the NBA playoffs. Angel, my man. Uh, so this, this, we got two topics really to close out the show. Both of them involve YouTubers. Um, I guess we can start off last weekend from uh, the Hard Rock Stadium, Miami Gardens, Florida. Uh, during a monsoon, Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Logan Paul went to a draw. Uh, no winner was really declared. Uh, but at the end of the day, man, uh, Logan stood in there, round one, pretty much. I mean, he he tried to put it on and tried to land a big flurry. Nothing really landed. Um, Logan survived, man. That's kind of the story coming out of this fight. Logan survived. Floyd was not able to put him away. Um, some people say that Floyd knocked him out and held him up or that Floyd didn't really want to finish him in the first yes, place. So on and so forth, which I, I mean, I think it's stupid. But regardless, what do you think about the fight itself? Do you think there was any any fuckery on that end? No, man. I mean, I we got to say, Josh. I mean, Logan, Logan Paul went eight rounds with Floyd Money Mayweather. Can you believe it? I thought he was gonna go down to a body shot, man. I thought Floyd was gonna find a opening, just light up that body all night. Didn't end up being the case. No, and and look, I, I, there's like a lot of boxing fans that are they're they're taking copium right now. You know what I mean? They're they're trying to rationalize themselves how this YouTuber could. Yeah, the, yeah, they're trying to process it, man. I mean, I don't blame it, and I don't blame him because look, I mean, on paper, yes, but this is also a 44 year old Floyd Mayweather who is 50 pounds lighter, taking on a kid who's trained for three years, probably on a lot of Sazul. You know what I mean? Like he he's a huge kid. Um. So I wasn't that surprised. People were like, oh, he got he got knocked out and Floyd held him up, or oh, Floyd didn't really want to finish him, or or whatever. I mean, you can't tell me that um, Floyd was not trying to go for the finish, especially round three on. You know what I mean? Um, but, but regardless of that, I mean, you, you could listen to it in the corner. I think listening to the corner work was really interesting, and I'm sure you, you could probably find clips of this online. I've only ever seen Floyd Mayweather's corner panicked once, and it was the Madonna one fight. The second time. I, the second most I've heard them like irritated or like I'm not sure if like um, panicked is the right word was this fight because they were like Floyd was like I can't fucking get in on him he's like I cannot I can't get in on him because like anytime he did Logan clinched or Logan would shug him off because he's a much bigger dude he wasn't able to put him away man I'll give him props dude we're living in that universe where Logan Paul yeah went a decent game plan yeah decent game plan he didn't get to use it the best of its ability but he had a decent game plan i'll tell you that remember what i told you josh when we did the the show before that i was like if you if you put the wrong guy in this situation like a better guy they think i think they could have found success mm-hmm. and they wouldn't have had to been as quick because really look at how good logan paul's boxing skills are i mean imagine how much just like a little better and maybe we live in a world where he could have landed a good clean hit and actually, because he landed one good shot in there. I don't know if you remember that, Josh, but he landed with a, a, a nice little one-two, if I remember right. Yeah, he landed like a, a he landed like a left jab, and then it came over the oh, like over the top with like a right hook that landed clean. That was solid. Like it was real. Yeah. Like I, like you know, like it's someone better, maybe with you know would have leveraged it better, better use of weight and all that. Ooh, that could have hurt Floyd on a bad night. I mm-hmm. mean, 
I, and you know, and and let's say hypothetically, man, if 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 Jake, the brother, is any better and he does fight Floyd, I mean, now Floyd has some thought, you know, because Floyd gave him props. That's something I didn't expect. Floyd told him he's, I'm not gonna lie, he was better than I thought. Yeah, I, Floyd. I mean, I've very rarely have you. Do you ever see Floyd like irritated? He at least seemed like legitimately, like kind of like upset after the fight that he wasn't yeah. able to put him away. But also, he doesn't really give many people props either. No, he doesn't. I mean, he gave him he gave him his props, he gave him his due. Uh, but even like in the um, the post fight interview, not in post fight interview at the press conference, he was kind of like, you know, he didn't care though. Let's be real. I, he was like, you know what, legacy doesn't feed your kids, and like he was kind of like talking down the fight stuff. But oh, you know, I didn't really care. You know what I mean? Like it was it was something like that, um, which I thought was like, I mean, we heard the corner work, man. He he seemed pretty irritated in the corner that he couldn't lay it much on Logan Paul. But hey, man, now we know next time uh, he has a fight, he's gonna make whoever his opponent is definitely cut some weight. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think he's gonna fight again, dude. I don't think he's gonna take that risk because you can keep on gambling, right? You can gamble fighting Tension NASA Coward. You can gamble fighting Con Rigger. You can, but at the same, at, this, at a certain point, diminishing returns are going to kick in. Where granted, granted, though, this opponent was significantly bigger than the rest and not as skilled as either of those two guys. No, no, no. But eventually he's going to run into that guy. He's going to run into somebody. He's going to over gamble and he's going to get fucked up. And I and think is that going to be Jake Paul, Josh? Is that going to be Jake Paul? Could it be? Uh, Could he... I don't know, man. I don't think Does Jake Paul break the simulation. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen, bro. I think the fact that like it's because Jake Paul is too big for him now. He's the real money fight, isn't it, Josh? No. That's what it is, Josh. You, no, if they want to Jake, make a Jake doesn't want that Floyd money because he knows he's just going to help Floyd out now that he has all the clout for being the best boxer on the planet. <laughs> well, look, dude, uh, and Floyd also really – because he's in control of, like, production. Like, he's, he's in control of the event. I'm not sure why his ass didn't hire some judges as, like, a backup plan because he he didn't win. That Logan Paul went to a draw with him. Like, yeah, if, you, if we would have scored the fight, would it technically been a draw? No, no, because I thought I was about to say Floyd took every round two round like I after round say. two. I was to say three, yeah. three. But regardless, the fact that he didn't hire judges because technically he went to a draw with Logan Paul. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that like, kind of <laughs> like, isn't that just like what? <laughs> like what, dude? Um. So I don't even know, man. I I don't know, like I don't know, man. I, I just don't know. I mean, it, it was a weird fight. Um, I know that most people didn't even see it because there were so many issues with Showtime. Um, on that end, yeah. In terms of people, that. um, and then also there's the rain. Uh, before we move on though, because I'm not sure how much left there is to touch on this fight. Before we move on to like the card this weekend, which is sure to be another shit show. Can we give some props to Chad Johnson real quick, bro? And Brian Maxwell? They, they they put on a decent little show there for for what it was worth. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was an, an, it was a lot of fun, bro. Uh, obviously, Chad Johnson came out, no head movement, just popping the jab, dude. But he looked like a boxer out there. That was a really, really fun fight. Brian Maxwell, though, I mean, you, I kind of felt like he was kind of taking it easy at first. Like, I don't think he realized, because we had him on the show, obviously. I don't think he realized what exactly to expect. In terms of it's an exhibition, will will Chad be going for the knockout? We'll, we'll, you know, I mean, so on and so forth. Hey man, gotta give some credit to our boy Ocho Cinco though. He landed a nice shot in there too, though. He did. He landed. I here's the thing. If it was judged, I had it. I had Brian Maxwell winning. I, I gave him the last two rounds, and obviously, the last round he fucking floored him. Yes. Um, so and which by the way, whoever took that shot of him standing over like. Brian Maxwell, bro, you're gonna have that shot for the rest of your life, dude. Like that, I'm sure you've seen the picture of him like standing over, like he probably has a canvas already, dude. I'm what sure he mean? does, dude. If he doesn't, my God, bro. Um, we gotta, we're gonna we gotta bring him back on, dude, and talk to him about that and ask well, about his said, experience. We'll, we'll get we'll get on that. He said he was down to come on and do some post fight stuff, which it'd be very interesting. I wanted to let let it simmer though to see how his life change after that, because yes, yeah, dude went awesome. viral for knocking him down and he probably should have gotten the knockout honestly but you can tell after he knocked him down he didn't go for the kill really um he didn't want to hurt ocho cinco like that bro it's yeah i mean and there was no point really i mean it was an exhibition but damn dude that, that was a fun it's just fight. an exhibition <laughs> it's just an exit throw in the damn towel um <laughs> but yeah man that was a fun fight is there anything else on the on the card you want to go ahead and uh point out as far as stuff to highlight 
No, no. I think those are the big, more important things that happened on that card. No disrespect to everything else. But there's an upset on that card, but we don't got to, I don't want to get into that right now. We don't, don't got to spend a whole lot of time on that. I mean, that was Luis Arias, huge underdog, got the win. That was a very, very fun fight. I'll give him that. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as that goes, man, that was a fun, a fun show last Saturday night in Miami. So now we're ready Sunday for night. the real biggest event. Now it's time for the real boxing event. Social Gloves Battle of the Platforms is Battle happening platforms. tomorrow night, Angel. I know you're very psyched about this event. I am. You've been talking to me about it. Uh, I'm less excited about it, but I I'm still excited because it gives me this. this it's because you're it's, not it's invested be, like I am, brother. I know it's weird to be invested and in, like not invested, but it's weird to be nostalgic about this sort of thing. But like it's giving me those old KSI versus Logan Paul one vibes from like four years ago. Yeah. Um. But regardless, man, here we are. Uh, obviously, YouTubers versus TikTokers. Uh, Bryce Hall, Austin McBroom, Anderson Gibb, Taylor Holder, J- Faze Jarvis is on the card. Our boy Deji taking on Vinny Hacker, my man. Uh, Angel, you've been way more invested in the storyline than I am. Um, I've been I've been catching up, though. I've been doing my homework. I've been listening to Mom's Basement I'm uh, with you, acclaimed bro. boxing commentator Killer Keemstar. Uh, but regardless, outside of that, do you mind uh, highlighting some of the fights here? What, what is some of the stuff to watch on this card tomorrow night? I mean, I, th- let me tell you, dude. I think, obviously, we had to start at the top. I mean, where the most drama is at. I mean, Austin McBroom, Bryce Hall, dude. I mean, they have a lot... This has been going on for like a year, two years now, I think. Almost two years, yeah. two years and a half, a year and a half. They've had some beef back and forth. But now, dude, they finally get to settle it. Obviously, yeah. I mean, that's why we're here. The whole reason this event is happening is because of them, too. So, you know, we got to give credit to those guys. We're working our way down. Obviously, Gibber back with Taylor Holder. I mean, Taylor Holder kind of, uh, Bryce Hall's kind of sidekick, a secondhand, you know, right-hand man, I guess you should, this is the proper way to put it. And, you know, we know our boy Gibber. He'll come out. He looks good. He's in good shape. He looks juicy. We we talked about it. His <laughs> physique's on point. And Deji, man, he said he wanted to get back in there. He doesn't look like he wants to get back in there, but he's back in there against Vinny Hacker, who doesn't seem like he has a lot of investment. Let me tell you, I feel like as far as people who I'll, I'll feel like I'll, I'll name out all the people who I think are very invested in this card. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll do uh, as far as Team YouTube. I think. Everybody besides Tanner Fox is pretty invested into this. Like they they put in the work, they trained, they're they're ready for their opponent. As Espec- far as tic- especially, bro, I gotta give a shout out to Face Jarvis, bro. And then as far as invested guys on the TikTok end, I think the only guys who are genuinely very invested in this are Taylor Holder, Vinny Hacker, Nate Wyatt, Michael Lee. I think those are the only guys who are very invested. And I mean, I feel like fight of the night. Not not trying to get too excited right now. Fight of the night, I feel it's gonna be Mike or Mike uh Faze Jarvis versus Michael Lee. Both mm. of those guys had significant body transformations from when the fight was announced. They seem very committed. I feel like there's a gut feeling that I think this fight's gonna be it. I feel like it's gonna be fight of the night. Now, Josh, I'm I'm gonna ask you this. Mm. Who do you think is gonna win it all in a way, as far as team YouTube or team TikTok? Who do you think is gonna come out with the most wins? What team is gonna have the most wins? Because it is so it is battle of the platforms, it is social clubs. Who is your platform? Well, first of all, I'm team YouTube all the way. Let's I mean, go. Let's go, champ. I don't – look, TikTok to me is like – it's it's the lame version of what Vine was in a way. Vine was for the OGs. Mm-hmm. I don't give a flying fuck about TikTok or half the people on team TikTok or whatever. You know what I mean? I'm going team YouTube all the way. My boy Deji, he's coming back. Deji is a dog, man. He's a straight-up dog. You saw that in the fighting at Jake Paul. You can you can teach boxing. You cannot teach fighting and heart, bro. And there's hey, some man. dude still to this day. Deji's still the one who was on the forest against Jake Paul, man. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Um, and uh, shout out Gib as well. Gib peeled out of his fucking tree. All right, my man is in great shape. Um, and then also Austin McBroom. Never been a big fan of the guy, but uh, I like him more than Bryce Hall. Uh, and then shout out Faze Jarvis, dude. I mean, I, I'm taking Team YouTube all the way. I'm on the same page as you, bro. I'm Team YouTube all the way too. I think I'll even even if like uh, uh, I didn't have any attachments to some of the people on Team YouTube, I think Team YouTube will get the most wins out of either platform. Well, yeah. So as far I mean, that that's that's what you think. Are you? I'm assuming you're also like, how can I put this? As far as the main event, explain to me why I should like. Not care, but 
between Bryce Hall, Os McBroom, is there any chance? Because I've been following this a little bit, um, as far as like their experience level in the training. Is it just me or is Bryce Hall like a massive underdog this weekend? I don't know, dude. I don't have a lot of faith in the guy. Like from what I've seen, I just he doesn't look very good. I mean, either guy doesn't look very good to an extent, right? For what it to wear. Oh yeah, of course. But I think the one thing that Austin has, I mean, Austin's a former D1 athlete, D1, D2. I don't remember D1. I think he claimed D1. I don't know if he's actually a D1 athlete. Uh, dude, he claimed all that. college dudes, they they claimed D1. But no, no, no. But he did play like legitimately like D1 or D2. No, no, I know, I know. I'm just I'm just fucking around. I can't remember. He, he, but he, but you know, the guy's an athlete. He played sports in college at a very high level. He played basketball. It was a D1, D2. I can't remember. Guy was pretty good. I mean, you have to be a pretty good player to make it that far, Josh. If it's Central D2 Michigan, or D1. he was D1. So, so he was, he was, they were a max school. Yeah. Yeah. So he was a D1, D1 former athlete, and uh, and something else. I mean, the guy's a man. Like not even trying to be funny or anything like that. Like at, 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 as far as human anatomy, he is as far as like growth and strength, he is peaked right now. He will not mm-hmm. be. As uh, as far only he will only get stronger if he puts in the work for it. Obviously, Bryce Hall for all you know for all it's worth. I mean he's still in his in his adolescent kind of teenage body. You know as as, as even though he is a pretty fit guy, he's built his frame out pretty well. Uh, Austin, that's the one thing I kind of got into. I'm like you know you can't take anything away from a guy with manpower. You know what I mean? He's, he's mm-hmm. a grown adult. That's the one thing is another thing you got to think about too. I mean I, you're saying Bryce is a sleeper, but I I think Austin. In, I think Austin's a pretty safe pick, for the most part. Mm-hmm. Well, that's fair enough, man. I, I don't have a whole lot of experience with these, with these, a lot of these dudes. I mean, I know who Deji is. I know who Gibb is. And I, I'm a very, I'm very well aware of Austin McBroom and Bryce Hall and some of these other dudes on the card. It's, it's hard not to be, right? I mean, yeah. they're, they're so far out there. Let me ask you this question because I'm actually genuinely, I'm genuinely unaware. Um. Is this like are these actually professionally sanctioned bouts or is it like the the OG KSI Logan Paul card where Dude, they're all that's lame? something I don't know because I was thinking about that I'm like no headgear headgear. Okay, all right, so all right, fair enough then. I have no idea because I, I everything I've been looking about this fight I can't find. I mean, shit, is it on Boxer? <laughs> that's how we'll know if it's pro. Uh, shit, dude, I don't know. Deji has a pro record officially. Well, if if you're pro, well if you're pro, you can't fight amateur again, can you? I don't think so. So Deji, well, technically, if it doesn't have to be a professionally pro. sanctioned amateur bout, they could just do like, what's it called, a white collar bout? Really, there's like no real sanctioning bodies. Don't know, dude. I don't know. This is actually a very interesting question. That's that's something I wish we knew now. Well, and there's also like no press for this fight, so I was. Uh, there's no real way to find out. There's no like press releases or anything, so like I can't find shit. Yeah, no, it's it, it's been rough. Let me tell you. But regardless, how much is this fight going to be tomorrow? Oh, dude, it's a pay per view, bro. It's it's not worth your money. <laughs> is, is it going to be a straight up fifty dollars? Yeah, which wow, I, I thought that was a big mistake on their part because if they would have sold it for like fifteen twenty, you would have had me. Well, I mean, what? I mean, I keep on bringing up the case. I look at like what one point five for like. 10, I mean, you bought pay-per-view, I didn't, but it was, it was like, like 10, 10 bucks. bucks. It was like 10 bucks, like 10, 10 15 bucks, dude. So yeah, it's kind of so. like, there's a formula there if you guys do it right. I just think, and look, I think if you're genuinely kind of invested into the story, know the, know a lot of the guys, 50 bucks isn't the worst, but it's definitely like, I don't know, it's, you know, 30 would have been more reasonable for me at least. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, yeah. they're selling it for 49.99 plus service fee. That's live stream insane. only, which right now I'm on their website. If I were to check out uh, with, and there's no promo code option either, you'd be <laughs> paying fifty eight forty nine at least in our state because I'm sure it changes by state tax or service fee or whatever. So yeah, you'd be paying fifty eight forty nine. Dude, between this and the Logan Paul fight, a lot of people, a lot of YouTubers, like a lot of YouTube fans, getting scammed out of their cash. Not nothing to cap though. Between spending pay-per-view money on Logan Paul or this card, I'd probably spend it on this card. I kid you not. Really? I will. I actually. Here's something that you did not know. I actually did buy the Logan Paul Floyd Mayweather card. Josh, I was about to, and then when I didn't do it, I was like, "Thank God I went to my local Buffalo Wild Wings." Oh, you would do well. You know why, dude? Because I bought that shit, and I was well. I was like debating, and I was just like, 
fuck it. Why not, bro? I put, I, I bought it, and I was like, I'm just going to have a chill night, you know, get some pizza, bro. I'm just going to chill. Uh-huh. Order the card. I shit you not. Two minutes in to see him fucking – them talking about the fight. It went out, and I did not get my stream back until Logan Paul walked out. Well, at I, least you got it at the right time. Uh, well, I got my refund, too, so I technically didn't pay for shit, but – um, uh, that that card though was actually real. Here's where here's the part that sucked. So I ended up going to my local Buffalo Wild Wings, um, as well, because my stream wasn't working. I had to race on over there, um, and that fight card overall was a lot of fun. So that I was surprised to say that you take the social buzz card over it. Yes, but, I personally would. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, outside of that, man, is there anything else you want to touch on that topic or any of those before we close out? No, man, I'm just, like I told you, I'm super excited to recap all of this. I mean, we're literally a day away, and, I mean, between Social Gloves, this pay-per-view, I mean, dude, we are, and then the NBA, I mean, there's so much going on. I mean, it's going to slow down next week. No disrespect to Cheng Sung Jung and Danny Ige, but, man, that, I'm not really super excited for that. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just to be honest, I mean, the, dude, Josh, they're putting it on ESPN, too. Oh, that's rough. Yeah. So there's that, but yeah, man, I, I I think I think we got it all out there. I'm really excited. We had a good show. I'm really excited for the week after that, though, because we get to talk about a uh, Surogon and our boy uh, Alexander Swolkov. <laughs> Alexander Swolkov, bro, he's back. <laughs> We're back every single week. Make sure you're subscribed on all platforms. Um, hope you guys have enjoyed the content. As always, I'm at Josh Shivanoff. Twitter, fucking verify me already. Um, at Courtside's, <laughs> Courtside Sound 1. Uh, on Twitter, he's at AngelOrtega underscore 01. We're available on Instagram as well. On every single platform you want to listen to or watch, we're right fucking there. So give us a follow. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed and enjoy the fights this weekend. Peace and butt grease. Mouse click.